Here's what you need to know about taking a Virgin Voyages cruise. Now, most cruises are fairly standard. There's a main dining room serving buffet-style food. You get a bit nickel and dimed, and entertainment tends to be Broadway-style shows. But then, in 2014, Virgin Voyages came along and entered the game to change the cruising industry and introduce a new and different kind of product for cruise travelers. Now, it's not for everyone, so in this video, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of sailing with Virgin Voyages. Now, Virgin's fleet is known as the Lady Ships, and it includes Scarlet Lady, which I've sailed, Valiant Lady, Resilient Lady, and Brilliant Lady. Now, these ships are a little different. They're celebrated for their sleek design, their modern luxury, and their innovative amenities. Virgin's port of departure in the U.S. is Miami, and their itineraries do focus mostly on the Caribbean, including the Bahamas, Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. Now, these often include stops at Virgin's private beach club in Bimini, which I've been, it's exceptional. And Virgin also offers some Mediterranean, European, and transatlantic voyages. Now, Virgin offers a ton of great benefits, and I do like Virgin Voyages. It's an attractive cruise option, but it's not for everyone. So let's get into the pros and cons of sailing with Virgin Voyages. First is that adults-only experience. Virgin Voyages caters exclusively to adults, ensuring that you're going to have a serene, calm, and sophisticated, mostly, atmosphere on board. This adults-only policy creates that refined environment, so it's really perfect for people who are looking to relax without families and loud children running around. I love carnival, but I hate the kids running down the hallway all throughout the night. I also don't like trying to use really small cruise ship pools and having kids splashing water aggressively everywhere. But these are things that you're never gonna have an issue with on Virgin. The second benefit is their higher brow dining and sophistication. Now, the dining options on Virgin Voyages, they're exceptional. They really focus on high quality, more sophisticated dining options. Their ship boasts various gourmet restaurants and each of them offers unique and exquisite dishes. They have an upscale steakhouse, they have international cuisine, they even have a lot of vegan and vegetarian options, and there really is something for everyone. Their dining experience is enhanced by their decor. They really put a lot of effort into making sure the decor is chic and stylish and that each restaurant has its kind of overall distinctive identity. And that just adds to that level of sophistication. Now, I really like the fact that Virgin approaches dining in a very different way. Instead of those traditional buffets and that main dining room or MDR, Virgin offers unique and upscale dining experiences with over 20 distinctive eateries, each with its own culinary theme and, as I mentioned, its own decor and ambiance. Now, all of these dining options are included in your cruise fare, meaning there are no additional charges for dining at any of their specialty restaurants. And I really like this all-inclusive approach because it allows guests to really get out and explore and try various culinary experiences without worrying about not liking it and wasting their money or incurring extra cost. And that's one of the fun things about cruising is trying foods that you probably would never pay to try on land. Also, unlike many other cruise lines that rely heavily on buffets for casual dining, which kind of grosses me out from a hygienic standpoint, Virgin Voyages opts for made-to-order dishes from various specialty restaurants. So in their cafeteria type of place, you order what you want on the app from their different kind of restaurant concepts and it's made to order. So this is great because every meal is freshly prepared and is high quality and made to order. It's not only a better experience for cruisers, but it also reduces food waste and enhances that dining experience because you're getting fresh cooked meals tailored to your individual preferences. Virgin also features a range of specialty restaurants, each with a unique culinary experience. I didn't love all of them, but it was really fun to try. This includes The Wake, which is a steak and seafood restaurant, and it's called The Wake because it's situated at the back of the ship, so you get that stunning view of the ship's wake. There's Pink Agave, which is an upscale Mexican eatery, Razzle Dazzle, which is plant-based, but there's stuff for us meat eaters too. Gun Bay is a lively Korean barbecue where it's communal, so you sit and make cruise friends. And then Test Kitchen, which is, let me just say, it's, it's unique. You gotta try it, it wasn't a favorite, and many others. Another benefit of Virgin Voyages is that it is truly all-inclusive. One of Virgin Voyages' stand-up features is its all-inclusive nature. Unlike many other cruise lines, Virgin includes things like Wi-Fi gratuities and even excellent in-stateroom movie and TV options in the cruise fare at no additional cost. When I cruise with most of the other cruise lines, it feels sometimes like you're being nickeled and dimed. Additionally, room service is free, although like a lot of cruise lines, they now have implemented a delivery fee. But here's a pro tip. Virgin Voyages has a policy where you get room service for free with a waived delivery fee if you order a beverage along with your food. So simply ordering a low-cost, non-alcoholic beverage, like a canned soda, 
is a way around paying a delivery fee and it's a lot cheaper than paying the room service delivery fee plus you get a drink out of it so always be sure to add a drink to your order to save money. Now, one thing I really appreciate about Virgin Voyages is their commitment to paying their employees a fair wage and ensuring that crew members are well compensated and valued for their hard work. Now, this stands in stark contrast to the other cruise lines, which tend to exploit labor. And that's an issue that I personally wrestle with significantly when it comes to cruising. So I don't have to feel that guilt or concern when I cruise with Virgin. Next are their innovative features. Virgin is at the forefront of innovation in the cruising industry. From their wristbands, which they call the band, that replace traditional key cards, to even customizable mood lighting in the staterooms, every detail is thought of. Their staterooms feature state-of-the-art amenities, like those LED lights that I talked about that can be adjusted to suit your preference, a tablet that controls room functions, and even a signature red hammock on every balcony. The ship also offers cutting edge entertainment options such as immersive theater experiences, a record shop, and a tattoo studio. Fun fact, I got my first and only tattoo on Virgin's Scarlet Lady. And of course it's cruise related, it's a compass. And getting a tattoo on a cruise ship was a pretty cool, unforgettable experience. Now it is important to note though, if you do wanna get a tattoo on board, new ink must be protected from the elements like sun and water. So schedule yours on one of those last days of the sailing so you don't have to deal with the hassle of keeping your tattoo protected on beach days and at the pool. Now, unfortunately, appointments do have to be made in person once you're on the ship and those later in the itinerary appointments obviously go quickly. So you do have to get there early on in your sailing and you do have to wait in a physical line to book your appointment. Next is the diverse and inclusive clientele. Virgin prides itself on being welcoming and diverse and inclusive, and I love that. Their commitment to diversity ensures that there is a vibrant and enriching onboard community where everyone feels welcome and valued. And personally, this is one of my favorite aspects of Virgin Voyages. They actively promote inclusivity with events and spaces designed for people of all backgrounds and orientations, and they really go out of their way to foster a sense of community and acceptance and it is particularly LGBTQ plus friendly. There's a lot of benefits to sailing with Virgin, but there are some downsides, so let's talk about them. First is that higher price point. While Virgin Voyages does offer that premium experience, it does come at a higher cost than other cruise options, especially given that they have somewhat limited and shorter itineraries, and more on that in a moment. Now, I do urge cruisers, though, to consider all of the elements. Factor in the fact that Virgin is more all-inclusive and your fare includes gratuities and Wi-Fi. And when you do that and you calculate it, the price difference isn't always as significant as it may initially appear. So be sure when you're comparing cruise options that you're comparing apples to apples. And with Virgin, the value for the money is evident in the quality of service, their amenities, and their overall experience. So even if it's more expensive, it might be a better option for you. Next is that sophisticated food. Yeah, I mentioned that the food is a pro for sailing with Virgin, but that sophisticated food might not appeal to everyone. Those highbrow dining options, while a highlight for many, it might not be to everyone's taste. Those who prefer a more traditional or straightforward cruise dining experience might find the menu on Virgin to be a little too foodie and less enjoyable. And by some people, I mean me. I tend to have a selective appetite. I wanna try new things, I just don't like them. So I personally did not love the food on Virgin. That being said, there is enough variety that even if you are a childish eater like yours truly, you'll find something that you can eat. You're never gonna go hungry. Next is the vibe. And again, if you're paying attention, you probably noted that I mentioned the vibe as a positive. Well, it can also be a negative because of this. While Virgin Voyage's sexy, innovative, and irreverent atmosphere is fun for people like me. I think it's great. I love it. It's not for everyone. And I've seen a lot of cruisers on online message boards go on a Virgin cruise having no idea what the vibe is like and they're a little scandalized. So while a lot of folks appreciate the unique, diverse, modern approach, other cruisers might prefer a more traditional and conservative cruising experience. Now look, while Virgin builds itself as adult and even kind of sexy, no one's gonna be out there humping in the hallways but Virgin is a more adult vibe. So let's just say this, if the idea of a drag show is entertainment or possibly someone wearing a very skimpy negligee to Virgin's PJ party, if those things make you clutch your pearls, Virgin probably is not the best cruise line for you. And last but not least, the big one for me, which is the limited options. As a relatively new player in the cruise industry, Virgin currently has a pretty small fleet compared to the more established legacy lines. This means fewer itineraries and departure ports from which to choose. 
Now, personally, this is the reason why I don't sail Virgin more often. I loved my Virgin cruise. I would love to cruise them again, but I can only go to Cozumel and Bimini so many times. And as a seasoned cruiser, I'm at the point where I seek out new ports of call and I'm not gonna find that usually with Virgin. While I don't love Virgin's limited options, their available routes are carefully curated to offer the best of those options. So each voyage is a great and memorable adventure. So unless you cruise a lot like me, it's still a great option. Plus, I will say their exclusive Bimini Beach Club experience in the Bahamas is always a standout. So now that you know the pros and cons of Virgin Voyages, you can make a better choice when it comes to picking and planning your cruise. I do have a complete and comprehensive Virgin Voyages cruise guidebook on my blog, profmelissa.com virgin. So be sure to go check that out so you can be as prepared as possible. Happy sailing.